right? And you might still struggle with some things. Well, First John says, cleanses you from all sin. Right. Can we, cleanse you from now, all now sin. We still have cleansing, a, right? Cleansing from sin. Yeah. And in, 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 in the Father's eyes, you're being cleansed from sin. You're no, you no longer have the condemnation of sin, right? And you may walk in the perfection that which Christ is in you because your his perfection is imputed to you. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, here we go. Here comes Calvinism now. Are you Calvinist? No. The 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 Calvinistic concept of pewter righteousness is not in the Bible. There wasn't a trade-off like Jesus received the wrath of God on the cross and we get credit for his righteousness. That's not in the Bible. Then Im we, we imputed walk by the means... righteousness of his spirit. Isn't that exactly no, 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 no. Okay, so okay, so when, when so then what is the righteousness of the saints exactly in Revelation? The white robes is the righteousness of the saints, not right. the righteousness of God. We're righteous because of what the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from. Right. like our sign? I think they like our sign. It's good. Most people don't want to talk about it. They just want to laugh and walk by. It's silly. What's silly about Jesus? He loves you and he wants to save you. But if you want to live your life the way you want to, that's your choice. I'll be praying for you and everybody else out here that rejects Jesus. Yes, folks. You don't want to reject Jesus Christ. He loves you. Yes, he is. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is King in kings and Lord of lords. And he is coming back one day to judge the living and the dead. Question is, where are you at in him? If you're like most people in America, they want to follow their own life the way they want to live it make themselves happy however they want to make themselves happy, regardless if they're destroying themselves or destroying somebody else, as long as they're happy and that's the end goal of what they want. But Jesus, Jesus died on a cross for you that you might live, but you must give up your life. You must give up your life. I've looked into the beliefs of this satanic temple and it's full of hypocrisy. Full of hypocrisy. These people are obsessed with the church of Satan and separating themselves from them and they're obsessed with Christians. In fact, this organization takes great pleasure in trying to trigger Christians. But only, they're only bringing about their own destruction. Only true salvation is in Jesus Christ who loves you and gave himself for you. As scripture says, that Jesus Christ came and died on a cross for you. For those that will repent of their sin and believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, you can do what you, can do what you want with your life. Nobody's forcing you to come to God. You can do what you want with your life. You can live your life in your own selfish desires. You can pretend that there's no God. 
You can pretend there's no Jesus. Yes, there's no amount of honking that's going to drown out Jesus Christ and his word and him returning. You see, God loves you regardless of how loud you honk how much you rebel against him. It's amazing an organization like the Satanic Temple claims that they don't believe in an actual Satan, but yet they come against the God of the Bible so hard as if he's real. If You know, when I see people dressing like Santa Claus and Easter bunnies in the streets and saying things that aren't real, I don't, I don't form an organization or write a whole essay about how how we should be resisting these make-believe creatures. But no, see, the thing is, God is real, and Jesus Christ is real, and this is why people reject Him. This is why people come against Him, because He is real. No matter how, no matter how hard Satanists, or whatever you call yourself, atheists, agnostics, or whoever, try to pretend that God doesn't exist deep down in their heart, they know that God exists. That's why they fight so hard to suppress Him in their knowledge. To suppress God. To fight against the knowledge of God. To fight against the, 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 even the principles of God. That's why they fight so hard in their own life and in the lives and, and in, in public as well. They fight so hard to come against what God says and who God is. But unfortunately, there's nothing that you can do to stop God. You can pretend He doesn't exist. You can act like whatever you want to do in this life. But He's not going to go away. God is not going to go away. He's not just a philosophy. He's a person. And at the end of the day, you're going to stand before Him. You're going to stand before God and give an account for your life. And what you did in this life, no matter how hard you fought against God, in this life and pretended that he doesn't exist, you're all going to stand before him one day. Oh, that's not good. I'm going to kick this out of the way. There we go. No matter how hard people fight against God, he's not going away. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's coming back one day to judge the living and the dead. And the best thing you can do now is to receive his love offer. Say, God made a love offering. He made a great love offering. And his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. He offered himself on a cross in the midst of his enemies. Jesus Christ died for people that reject him. Jesus Christ died for people that pretend he doesn't exist. Jesus Christ died for people that basically want to see him wiped off the face of the planet. That's who Jesus died for. And he offers eternal life to all, whomsoever will, the Bible says, whoever will repent, which is a turning away from your sin, your lifestyle of sin, your selfish pursuit of this life, turning away from this world, to Jesus Christ in faith. And he promises that you will be born again, that you will have eternal life in him. This is what he offers you. Why do people reject God? Why do people make up philosophies and concepts in their mind that are against the God of heaven and earth? Because there's a spirit of rebellion in the heart of man when they turn to their sin. Those that love their sin would rather continue in their sin and do what they want to do in peace and not have anybody tell them what they're doing is wrong and continue to keep and continue to walk the way they want to walk. But unfortunately, the Bible says, not unfortunately, but the Bible does say the wages of sin is death. And that's what's given to those that want to continue in their sin. It's not that God is this big bad God that's waiting to condemn people. No, He's waiting to save you. It's people that have destroyed themselves. We are created by God in our mother's womb. We've been given, mankind has been given dominion over the earth. Watch out, brother. Sorry. Wait. 
been dominion, given dominion over the earth, to be good stewards over the earth. God has given us many good things, and mankind has repaid God with rebellion against Him, rebellion against His Christ, rebellion against what God is and what He says and what He stands for, and man has tried to be their own God, at the same time trying to claim that God in heaven and earth was formed in the mind of man. These are all baseless claims. But God is still calling men and women to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. God is still calling men and women to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear about sinners. Sinners will end up in the lake of fire. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Catholic or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Baptist or a Methodist or whatever you call yourself. The Bible is very clear that sinners will end up in the lake of fire. What is a sinner? A sinner is somebody that walks in, practices sin. Lying, cheating, stealing, homosexuality, lust, fornication, adultery, greediness, covetousness, blasphemy, idolatry. This is what the Bible calls sin. And this organization and many others promote sin. They tell you, hey, I'm a, I'm a sinner and I'm going to keep being a sinner because I love to sin. I'm going to do what I want until I die because I want to make myself happy. Well, you make yourself happy in this life by rebelling against God, you're going to get the wages of sin, and that's death. And that's on your own head. It's not that God didn't give you an opportunity. Jesus didn't give you an opportunity to get right with Him by His power. You rejected Him. And people continue to reject Him. I rejected Him for a long time. I rejected Jesus. I rejected God in the past, just like a lot of you do. Just like a lot of you do. I don't know why you're cheering for your own shame. I know you love sin. And, you're, and you know what? You're going to get rewarded for your sin one day with death. And you know, No, I'm going to die in the body, but not in the spirit, my man. I'm talking about the second death, the lake of fire. And that's where sinners are going to go because they love their sin. And God loves you so much that he's offering, he offered his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But you want to continue in your sin. Enjoy your sin for this life. Because when you die and you go to hell, you're going to regret being a sinner. But God has given you an opportunity now to get right with him through Jesus Christ. But you've got to turn from your sin. That's what Jesus said. That's what God said. You must turn from sin. We are not all sinners. Some of us have been cleansed from our sin. Some of us have been made free from the power of sin. As the Bible promises that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, from all sin. This is a blessing. There's a lot of proud people that go into these conferences thinking that they know better. They come in with their super intelligence, with their hypocrisy. I mean, if you ever look at the seven tenets of the Satanic Temple, it's complete hypocrisy. Complete hypocrisy. It's easy to destroy the seven tenets of the Satanic Temple. Complete hypocrisy. It's not even, it, they talk about science but deny science at the same time. Well, over 95% 90, of biologists will tell you that life begins at conception. And the Satanic Temple says that the body is inviolable, that you shouldn't dishonor it. But yet, at the same time, they think it's a religious right to commit abortion. Hypocrisy. So they're going against their own tenets. And any any organization or morality they call or religion that goes against their own tenets, it's going to fall apart. It's going to self-destruct. And that's what's going to happen to Satanic Temple or, or who they say that they are not with, all the other Satanic organizations in America. It's going to self-destruct eventually. Just like every cult, every false religion, it's all going to self-destruct one day. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said that. Jesus said you must repent or perish. It's amazing that an organization that says there's no God, there's no Satan, no real literal Satan, fights so hard against the God of heaven and earth. Fights, they're so obsessed with distinguishing themselves from Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan and also from triggering Christians. It's amazing when you read their, their beliefs how much they hate Christians and Christianity and the God of the Bible and they can't stand the church of Satan. They're obsessed with it. But the fact of the matter is, no matter what kind of sinner you are, no matter how hard you try to pretend yourself and suppress the truth that God exists, no matter how hard you try to sin in your life because you don't want anybody telling you what to do is wrong or right, you want to make yourself happy, at the end of the day, you're going to die. You're going to die, and you're going to face the truth. No matter how you deceived yourself, God bless you, sir. Is that your IQ, or am I your number one preacher? One day you're going to die. One day you're going to die, and you're going to stand before the God that you gave the middle finger to. You're going to stand before the God that you said, forget you, I'm going to live how I want to live. I'm not going to submit myself to this God that says I can't do what I want to do in my sin. In my sin. Hail Satan, huh? What Satan are you talking about? Your philosophy or the real Satan? Because if you're hailing the real Satan, that Satan wants to destroy you. Why would you hail the one that wants to steal, kill, and destroy you? I would love to have a conversation with you Satanists. That would be wonderful. But most of the time, Satanists just run away from me. Satanists don't want to talk to me. They don't want to talk to me. I don't know why. I love talking to people. I'd love to have a discussion with you about your beliefs and line it up with what truth is by God's grace. But hey, I'm going to keep preaching. Jesus said, repent or perish. Repentance is a turning away from your sin and by faith turn to Him. Satanists say, do what you will. Do what thou wilt, for this is the whole of the law. A Satanist will say, I'm going to do what I want to do. Don't don't violate me because I want to do what I want to do. It makes me happy. If I want to sin, let me sin in peace. God doesn't exist, they say. What we want to do is a religious right. Okay, you want to kill babies in your womb. You want to kill babies in their mother's womb as a religious right. What if I said I like to murder people as a religious right? Is that okay too? I want to murder, I want to murder my friend here as a sacrifice to the devil. Oh, it's my freedom of religion. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't make it right. It's still murder. It's still sin. It's still killing a human life. Oh, but you believe in science, right? It's scientific, right? That you say that the baby in the womb is not a baby. That's science? Really? I think a biologist would disagree with you. I've seen babies born at 17 weeks, stillborn. I've seen them born at 22 weeks. I've seen a baby at 24 weeks even within the abortion limit in some state, uh, that, that was in some states, that some people would say that's not a baby. You're full of it, full of lies, full of ignorance, and you're not scientific. That's not science, no matter how you cut it. That's your belief. That's your belief. That's not science. Science says 95% of, si of biologists say that life begins at conception. God gave it life. The Bible's very clear the value of an unborn child. And you want your religious right to kill babies in their mother's womb. That's wicked. That's evil. But the Bible, you're, you're, these Satanists are actually proving the Bible true, even though they don't like the Bible. They're proving it true. As the Bible says, they will call good evil and evil good. That's exactly what they're doing. Oh, folks, but even in the midst of all this, Jesus sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross for you. At the end of the day, when you die and you stand before God, you will have no excuse. You will not have any excuse for the sin in your life because God so lovingly tried to reach out to you so many times in this life. And how many times you rejected God for your homosexuality or for your abortion right or for your transgenderism or for your lying or for your fornication or your or or for your adultery or your 
chasing after riches in this life and not caring about anything else and wanting to do what you want to do, forming your own God in your mind, at the end of the day, it's not going to be worth it. You can live your life now how you want it. You can say, hail Satan all day. But at the end of the day, you're going to face the fire. You're going to face the truth. I can't hear you. I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't hear you. Can't hear you, ma'am. Can't hear you. At the end of the day, you're going to face the truth that God is real. And you're going to stand before him and have to face the fire of judgment day in your sin. Unless you take what God is offering you. Eternal life through Christ Jesus. Eternal life through Christ Jesus. Through repentance. Repentance is a mind change. Metanoia in the Greek, a mind change which leads to a heartily amending of your wicked ways. And the only one that can do that is God to help you with that. And turning to Christ by faith as the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. What are you doing with him today? You have a choice. You do have a choice. You can live how you want to live to a certain extent. You can live how you want to live and you can do what you want to do. But don't think that you won't be held accountable. Don't think that your, your, your actions in this life don't have consequences, because they do. Your life will have eternal consequences. One day you're going to stand before the God of heaven and earth, and you're going to give an account for the precious gift that God gave you in this life. The precious gift that God gave you, which is life. And you're going to give an account for what you did with that life. There's not a whole lot of people over here. This is why Jesus has given you a chance. God has given you a chance over and over again. He's offering you his love today. Why won't you receive it? Why won't you take God's offer of mercy? It's not your rules. It's not your game. You didn't create yourself. You didn't create the world. You didn't make the rules. God did. And you can only come to God on God's terms, not your terms. And it's been laid down in Scripture has been spoken throughout the ages, especially in this country. This country is gospel hardened. I'm from the South. I live in Georgia, what they call the Bible Belt. But the Bible Belt is unloosened, and their pants are down, and they're exposing their nakedness because it's a bunch of hypocrisy in the South. Unfortunately, it breaks my heart. But God is calling you to himself through his preachers, through the word of God, so that you can be right with him and no longer live for yourself anymore. No longer live for your selfish desires anymore. Stop pretending that God doesn't exist and that you won't stand before him one day. Because one day you will. One day you will stand before him. No matter how mad it makes you to hear the words of the gospel, guess what? God is more mad. When you stand before him, you walk before him, rejecting him, when he's offered you his love, when he's offered you his patience, his grace, turn to Jesus. He loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to make you a new man, a new woman. God does exist. I'm sorry? Can't hear you, man. Still can't hear you. You can come talk to us, man. We'd love to talk to you. All right, man, come on. What's going on? Good, good, man. What's up? How, how you doing, man? Good. What's going on? All man? right. What can I do for you, man? Just want to say how amazing. Oh, okay. Praise God, man. Okay, yeah. God I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you, man. God is everything. Yes, he is. That's He's right. All. He is, man. And he wants to save. He wants to save. He wants to save souls. Take care, man. He wants to save souls. He wants to save your life. He wants to give you new life, eternal life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing what God wants to do? Deep down, deep down, you are not truly happy in your sin. I know what sin brings. I used to be a sinner before. It doesn't make you happy in deep down in your soul. It might make you happy in the flesh. It might feel good to sin and do what you want to do and live how you want to live in this life, pretending there's no God and getting drunk and having sex outside of marriage and being a homosexual and a transgender and a liar and pretending there's no God so you can just do whatever you want to do. 
Yeah, that sounds fun, doesn't it? That's exactly what mankind would do if they were sinners. Pretending, right? But you don't even realize you're being played by a real Satan. You see, the Satanic Temple would say that Satan doesn't really exist. And so would the Church of Satan. They would say they don't really worship a real Satan. But that's a lie. Because there's been evidence come out, and this is not the Church of Satan, this is the Satanic Temple, that Antoine LaVey's followers said that he did believe in an actual Satan and that they worshipped him behind closed doors. And I'm suspicious that the leaders of the Satanic Temple do the same thing. Why? Because the devil's fingerprints is all over this organization. All the symbolism is there. All the, the, all the theolo theology of Satan is there. They just try to play it up and act like he doesn't exist with, oh no, it's actually a philosophical Satan. It's a philosophy. No, it's an actual Satan. You're just being played. You see, if I was the devil, if I was the devil and I wanted to advance my will on the earth, what would I do to, to silly humans? How would I deceive silly humans to turn away from God and live for the devil if I was a devil? I would make humans believe that the devil doesn't exist. I would hide myself in the cloud and give and inspire people's minds to believe things that are my philosophies, but pretending that I don't exist. That's how I would do it. I would deceive Christians to think it's okay to keep sinning and still be a Christian. That's how I would, if I was a devil, that's how I would do it. I would deceive Christians to make them think that it's okay to keep sinning, and I would deceive Satanists to push my philosophy and act like Satan isn't real. Like a literal Satan. Most people don't even realize they're being used of the devil. They can't even see it because their eyes are blinded in sin and they walk by in their proud, scoffing, mocking tone and yet they themselves are in bondage to the devil. It's like, a, it's like a man who's walking by in handcuffs acting like he's free and scoffing at all these free people. It doesn't make sense. There's only freedom in Jesus Christ. There's healing. There's deliverance, deliverance from demons. I've been, I've been delivered from demons. I used to have these demons touching me and speaking to me and revealing themselves to me until Jesus Christ came and cast them all out. My wife, was, uh, my wife had an incurable disease and God supernaturally healed her from an incurable disease. And I have so many testimonies of what God has done in my life, made me holy and ex-sinner things that he spoke way years before about my life coming to pass and my children, so many evidences of God in the earth. How would you reject such a great God? He has offered himself to you. He's offered his only begotten son to you. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with the blood of Jesus today? Are you going to live for him? Are you going to follow him? Are you going to repent of your sin and live for him? and do what he says to do? Or are you going to continue either to pretend to be a Christian just because you go to mass or service or whatever you want to call your religious ceremony every Sunday and pretend that you're okay with God when really in your life you're walking as a sinner? Really in your life you're not really following Christ. You're just pretending you are. That's, that's about what most Christians in America that I see in the eight years I've been preaching in the streets of Atlanta, Columbus, different college campuses, now Boston, this is what I've seen about Christians that call themselves Christians that go to church on Sunday. They are hypocrites. Because in one side of their mouth, they'll say they're Christian, and on the other side of the mouth, they'll say they're sinners. Can't have both ways. They'll go to church on Sunday, and then their whole life, their whole week, they'll get drunk, They'll have sex outside of marriage. They'll watch pornography. Not everybody. They'll, they'll, they'll do all these wicked things that show that they really aren't born again. And Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. How can a good tree produce evil fruit? And how can an evil tree produce good fruit? Jesus said, make the tree good and its fruit good. And that's what God wants for you. He wants you to have good fruit. He wants you to be a real follower of His. Not a fake, hypocrite, religious, so-called Christian. He wants you to be a real follower 
of Jesus Christ. And he's made a way to do it. He's given us power over sin. He's given us power over death. He's given us the Holy Spirit to keep us free from sin. And in him, we, ha we move and we have our being. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Do you understand? So turn to him today. Don't waste your time anymore with this life. This life is a blink of an eye. You're here today and gone tomorrow. The Bible calls it a vapor. It's like cigarette smoke or vape smoke, vapor that is there for a couple seconds and it's gone, completely gone in the next 10 seconds. That's what our life is in this life, our proud, mocking life that most people live for themselves. Don't live for yourself anymore. Turn to Jesus. Amen. Do you want to preach, bro? Do you want to preach over here or somewhere else? Where do you want to go? Oh, yes. Oh, well, my friends, we're, we're out here today to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says if you love him, you'll obey him. You know, that's how you know you can truly say that you love Jesus if your actions are, are speaking louder than your words. Because Jesus, he's not after people who just profess to know him with, it, with their lips. He's after people who surrender their hearts to Him. And that's my question to you. Have you surrendered your heart to Jesus, or do you blaspheme Him? Yes, and it's very clear, very evident that you blaspheme Him. But you know, He still died for you. He still died for you. Yes, He came back and rose to the, to the Father, to heaven, so that you could rise. Don't be part of the second resurrection. Jesus, he died and he rose again so that you could rise with him when he returned. You know, that, that's the beauty and the hope that the righteous have. You know, the Bible says that when the righteous die, their hope is not cut off. You have eternal life and eternal hope. Nothing that this world offers you can give you that satisfaction Nothing that this world offers you can give you what you're seeking for. And you know, you may seek for these things in hobbies. You may seek for these things in, in sex outside of marriage, and sports, and video games, and sin. But the reason why you keep going back to these things is because they never promised to give you. Their promises were broken. Their promises cannot give you what you desire because what you're desiring is a relationship with the Father and that's only through the Son which is Jesus Christ and it's up to you what you do with this offer because no one's going to force you you have to come to Him willingly you have to come to Jesus on your own accord just because your, your father is a pastor, your granddad is a pastor, doesn't mean you have entry into the gates of heaven. But you have to come to Jesus yourself. You have to give up your sin. That's the thing that people don't want to give up when they say they came to Christ. You ask them if they're still living in sin. And if you're still living in sin, you don't belong to God. It's as simple as that. If you're living in sin, you're an enemy of God. The Bible says that the love of this world is enmity with God. But the friendship of this world is the enmity with God. That if you love this world Amen. or the things that are in this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Do you love, do you love this world more than you love God? You know, some people are honest. We have the Satan con going down, at, down, the street, down, down the street. They don't hide who they truly serve. Hi. Appreciate you guys sharing the gospel. Yeah, amen. Praise God. You know, we have people who don't, who, who aren't ashamed of to be a father, to have their father be the devil. And you know, there's so many people who are on the middle, who are in the middle, 
who want to serve God, who want to serve themselves. But my friends, you can't hold hands with God and hold hands with demons. But that's what many people do. Amen. They say that they serve God, but they deny Him. They deny Jesus with their actions. And Jesus, He's not looking for you to just surrender your Wednesdays, your Sundays to Him. He's commanding you to surrender your life to Him. He's, he's commanding you to surrender everything to Him. Have you surrendered everything to Jesus? Or are you still, or, or are you still playing games with God? How, how you respond to the gospel message will show you where you stand spiritually with God. If you're apathetic, if you could care less about what's being said, you know, that, that's a scary place to be. It's for you, man. It's a scary place to be. Turn to Jesus. You don't care what God says about you anymore. You're just giving yourself over. Turn to Jesus. But if you hear the word, don't just listen to it, but apply it. Because so many people hear the gospel, they agree with it. They'll sit down to preach it. But then they'll go off and blaspheme God's name. How you doing? Turn to Jesus, man. What is your life like? Where will you spend all of eternity? Will you take your last breath today? There you go, take that. And Do you know when you're going to die? You know, I don't think any of you know the question, the answer to these questions. You may not know when you will take your last breath. No one has it on their calendar today. Well, I'm gonna die tomorrow at five o'clock. Nobody, nobody knows when they're gonna die. And my friends, this is why we come out here. First, we give God the glory, and then we preach the gospel for sinners to be saved. But you must get right with God because the world that we're living in is completely against the things of God. You know, we, we built a society that is so independent from God, and you're becoming more dependent on the things of this world. You know, I'm not against planning for the future, planning for retirement and all these things, but sadly our society has prioritized those things to make them Hi. so dependent on this system rather than God. What's going on? Yeah, a, a good, quick little prayer, real quick, a prayer. Yeah. I need one. What you need? Jesus Christ. What, what, what do you need prayer for? I don't know, I feel like I've been, been really... But the question is, do you want to be set free from your sin? Like, uh, uh, rough, like, in sin or rough because you need, you need some shelter or food? Or? In sin. Sin? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the only remedy for sin is to repent, mm -hmm. as Jesus said. See, God gives us the power to overcome all sin, but that depends on you responding to God. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you want more? You want Jesus more and life and eternal life and the joy of the Lord, or do you want your sin, you know? And God, and, and sometimes it gets to the point where we just can't stop. And that's where we cry out to God and he gives us power to overcome it. I mean, I, I was a sinner at one time too. I, there's some things that I, in my own power, I couldn't stop. But when I came to Jesus and I cried out to God and, 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 and asked for his mercy and power over sin, he gave me power over sin, delivered me from demons, all kind of stuff. You know, so your name's Amber. He can do it for you. He can, he can. So I, you, you want me to pray? Okay. okay, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Amber. I thank you for, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we're, okay. we're after. Take care. Thank you, you too. All right. Will you spend all of eternity in hell? Why would you serve the one that hates you? Why would you give the one glory that hates you, that despises you? You know, this young man just asked me where Satan Con is. Can I direct him to Satan Con? But my friends, no, we're here to direct you to Jesus Christ today. Because Satan cannot promise you eternal life. There's only one thing that Satan can promise you, and that's eternity in hell. 
for my friend. We're out here showing you that Jesus Christ has died for you. You know, and it's foolishness to those who are perishing. Turn to Jesus. It's not going to be funny the when you die. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. You know, if we really cared about what we thought about us, if we feared man above God, we would never be driven out here. Because that we have too many fake Christians that are so scared to preach the true gospel and truth. They're stepping on eggshells around people. To not offend them. But my friends, the Bible says that the word of God is a sword. The word of God is a sword. It's offensive. What will you do when God comes back? You know, Jesus is actually ready to make war with the sinner. He's ready to make war. Are you ready to be judged by God? Are you ready to stand in judgment to give an account for how you live this life? You may not be to do sinful things, but my friends, the sin is unbelief. The condemnation of God already rests upon your shoulders if you don't believe in Jesus. And no, we're not just saying that you must believe him intellectually or historically. But you must know him intimately. And if you know him intimately, you won't sin against God. That's right. Because if, if you sin against God and profess to love him, that's a walking contradiction. Because Jesus says very clear that if you love God, you'll keep his commandment. If you love your husband or your wife, you won't commit adultery against them. If you love your friends, you won't gossip about them. If you love your mother or your father, you'll honor them. But this is what sin does. When you're living in sin, you walk in darkness, and you, you can't see the light. And some of you have seen the light, but you refuse to walk in it. Because if you walk in the light, you'll be, your, your, your deeds will be exposed if you come to the light. But if you come to the light so that your deeds will be exposed, then you can have eternal life. Because a lot of people get to that point where they see themselves in truth, and then they choose to stay in their wicked ways. <laughs> but what will you do today? What will you do today, my friend, now that the gospel has been preached to you? You know, sometimes it takes God taking all the possessions you own out of your life. People call that rock bottom. Where God literally takes you to rock bottom for you to finally wake up. You know, not everyone's that fortunate, though. Sometimes God will just take your life because you don't want him. And you know, someone who doesn't want God is going to go to a place where it has nothing to do with God. It's going to be eternal hell. And you know, all hell is, is the absence of God. God doesn't bring suffering. Suffering is already in hell. Hell is literally the absence of God. You know, because God is light. And if you remove light, there's darkness. God is love. In hell, there is no love. God is mercy. In hell, there is no mercy. God promises to wipe away all tears, and there will be no more pain, grief, sorrow. But in hell, there's going to be eternal tears. There's going to be eternal sorrow, grief, and pain. So why, why would you choose to go to hell? You have this, this ultimatum set before you today, to choose heaven or to choose hell. You have these two choices. And a lot of you only look at it with your carnal eyes. You, you see all the pleasure on the outside of this, this wide and broad path that leads to eternal destruction. And you choose that path instead because it seems more pleasurable. But if the Bible says we're to walk by faith and not by sight, but when you look through the eyes of faith, 
if it hasn't been going to perseverance will seem more attractive and appealing to you because you see to the other side. And that's the faith that God can give you. You know, we're not we're not saying that when you come when you come to Christ, that's a bed of roses here on out. No, we're actually saying the opposite. You'll have probably a more tough life with Christ than you do apart from him. But it's not even he can give you the grace, the strength that you need to endure the trials, the tribulations, and the temptation, and this life. He can give you his strength. But that's up to you. That's up to you, my friend. You know, this, this world, especially here in America, has primed, has primed you so much. Here you go, man. Take care. To be so independent from God. But God, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Well, typically, a poor person Turn to Jesus. On You're all going to die one day and stand before God. It won't be funny and then. That's what you must be like to God. It won't be funny then. You must be poor in spirit to God. You must come back to Him every single day for your daily bread. But what this world has, has primed you to be is Freedom. someone who is Take completely care. independent from God. And the Bible says that every nation that forgets God is turned into hell. And it actually says, it actually says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Did you know that? Did you know that, that God is angry with the wicked every single day? One day his wrath will be poured out. He's very long suffering. And he's not willing that any of you should perish and go to hell. It's, it's up to you. He's reading the track. Praise God. You know, this may be your last day. And a lot of you walk around thinking that it's not. Well, here's just the, the, the statistics for you. 155,000 people die every single day. 155,000. To think that you won't be a part of that number is just foolishness. Because any one of us could die. We're not invincible. We're not invincible, my friends. You may, you may be paying attention to all, all of this AI stuff that's taking place. Where man is coming to merge themselves with AI to live forever. But it's so foolish because they're spending all of this money on something that will never be accomplished. When Jesus Christ offers eternal life for free. He offers eternal life for free. But man wants to do it that, their own way. You know, they want eternal life, but they want their sin as well. But Jesus says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve this world and serve yourself. You can't serve this world and serve God. You can't serve yourself and serve God. You can't have yourself on the, on this, the throne of your heart and have God on the throne of your heart at the same time. You know, there's only one seat. You won't and, be on saying the that to God, sir. You won't be saying that to God. Blah, blah, blah. You know, why are you so hardened, sir? You Turn to have Jesus. Many years left to live. Turn to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You die in your sin, he's not just a prophet, he's the Son of God. Then you're going to go to hell, and we don't want that for you. You know, someone that's heard to see an, elder, an elderly man flick a preacher off. But you know, that's what sin does to you. When light is shine on darkness, what happens? It reveals whatever's in the dark. And when the gospel goes forth and it's preached to people who are living in darkness, it reveals to those what it's in their own heart. It reveals to those it, it, it reveals to those who are outside. Turn to Jesus. What's in, what's inside? Just like if you turn on a, a lamp inside of a dark room, it, it shows you everything that's in that room. And that's exactly what the gospel does. That's, Jesus says he's the light of the world. When he came into this world, the reason why he was 
killed is because these religious hypocritical Pharisees were shown themselves in truth. They were shown by God himself what they truly are like. They appear so holy on the outside, but on the inside they were they were full of extortion. They were full of, of deceit, of maliciousness. But you know, Jesus, he was very merciful and still graceful to them and wanted them to repent. He rebuked their, their, hip, hip, their hypocrisy, but he still offered them life after that. He says, if you believe, if, if you believe and, and say that you're a disciple and walk in my word and do what I say, then you are my disciple indeed. And that can be said of you. Watch out, bro. You know, here's a test to see how how loving you are towards God. What life are you living for? Are you living for this life, the here and now? Or are you living for the life to come? Hey, bro. I think I want to go down there to preach. On the corner? Yeah. Let's go. What life are you living for today? <coughs> Are you living for the life that is going to perish? Or are you living for the life that will never cease? Are you living to please God or to please yourself? Because if you're living this life to please yourself, one day you'll give an account for how you spent this life. Everything you see will cease. Everything you see will perish, the Bible says. And why would you live for a world that is perishing? You know, the Bible says that everything under the sun is vanity. It's all perishing. It's all passing. It's like grasping for the wind. If you try to grasp for the wind, it's going to perish. It, 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 it's not going to, you can't grasp for the wind. And that's what it's like to try to live in sin. When you're living in sin, it won't please you, it won't satisfy you. You know, one thing, one of many things that God hates, that if you want to listen to this because God does hate, He says, I hate the proud book. God hates the proud book. You know, in America, so many people are so independent from God, and they love their sin, and they hate God. And they have a proud, a proud book. Do you know Jesus today? Are you ready to stand before him to be judged by everything? He says, thou shalt not lie. He says, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not hate the Lord thy God's name in vain. And if you're just guilty of one of these things, you're guilty of, of everything. How you doing, man? You're, you're just a transgressor. Good. I... You stand as a transgressor of God. And if you yes. stand as a transgressor of God, then you stand as an enemy of God. There's no enemy of God in his kingdom. It's all about Jesus, man. Would you invite a murderer Jesus. inside of your home to live with you? I don't think anybody in their right mind would invite a murderer that is prone to killing people inside of their home. It's all about Jesus, man. So why do you think that God should do the same for you? And, uh, God damn, uh, you know, God I think you're filled with demons, from those actually. Things, and then invite you. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm saying you're filled with demons. You need Jesus. Uh, uh, it's not allowed. I'm an archangel, son. He's like calling all of you uh, everywhere house, at the sound of my voice to right, repent man. of your Jesus sins. Is all the but so many people, they just trample the gospel rest of Jesus is alive their feet and he has power over all the demons. I see him today. So right. that's, that's what you need. Jesus that's went that's that's he went through trampling. He went through people. Yeah, How'd you get like this, man? How'd you get out here? I know. But he still died on the cross for you. 
You know, Jesus died on the cross knowing that many of you would still repent there. But it still gives you a chance to repent. I am too. I am a... But it's up to you. I am a Lucifer. It's up to you to write with him. You gave yourself to Lucifer? No, I told the state I was Lucifer. Oh, well, you're not Lucifer. I the adulterous woman that was You're just a man. I hate to go and sin no more. Lucifer got blamed. He's a man. Because if you want to make a relationship right, then it's fine. Because you're For example, does it mean you're an adulterer against your wife? No. Does it mean you're mad? Does it mean you're mad? Make things right? Like I said, it's all about Jesus. It doesn't matter about all that. It's Christ in you. That's the thing. Sure. But you've never been there. You've never been to the kingdom of God. We all got to hell because. That's right. No, because. No, the devil and his demons got sent back, devil, sent out. Devil is a West Coast That's God using you as a man. What's your name? Sean Azrael. But my friend. No, your name, the man, not 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 these demons. Your name. What did your mom name you? Derek. Are you living holy? Okay. So you need deliverance. Yes, sir. Are you tired of being tormented by demons? I'm not tormented by demons. You look like you are. No, I'm not. Chris. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I know, but that opens you up you to know, demons. Jesus Christ, no, I fight he demons. Gives you the power over demons. Right, right. Hell. That's right. So it's you invite the demons. Oh, I take them straight to hell. No, no, they're going to take you to hell. No, um, they're deceiving you. They're, they're only playing with you. They're only deceiving you. I'm trying to help you. We are the of hell. No, Jesus created hell. And the demons are going to burn in hell. You can be saved, Derek. No, you can be saved. No, it's about deliverance. Only God can save you. But you got to want to be free. I get it, I get it. All that doesn't matter right now. What matters is your soul. And if you want to keep being a, if you want to be a, a channel for demons, you have a new boss in hell. Satan is out. No, no, he's, no. The boss of hell is God. No, the boss of hell is God. Jesus, he's the boss. He's the boss. And he's gonna send. He's gonna send demons like that are living in this body, in this body here. How many of you are in there? How many are in there? Well, I got four angels right here. So you, how many deem, how many are in there? Okay. Well, those four angels are headed for the lake of fire because of what Jesus did on the cross. No, not the real Michael. Not the real Michael. Redhead's dead. That guy is. But you, you, Derek. I think your name's Derek. Jesus, not you. It's my great joy because of deity. Now I pray for him because he's back. How am I so my friend, you know, all these demons are quiet, quiet in the name I, of Jesus. I, all the demons be quiet in Jesus' name. I am uh, not like you. Cannot I want to hear this man. Really, What's your name? Terry Jangabai. What's your name? What'd your mom name you? Terry Jangabai. Terry? No, Terry. Okay. You can be delivered by Jesus Christ. Do you want to be free from meth? No, I remember so. Do you want to be free from sin? No, not really. Just, I okay, well, then you gotta, you're got you going to keep being a, a conduit of demons, and demons are speaking through you right now. But you, you cannot fight demons on your own strength, only Christ. Believe me, I had demons living inside of me, too. You can have freedom in Christ. I have written the Quran. Speaks all of me in the Quran. Jane is my son. The Quran is from the devil. No. Yes, it is. The devil gave it to, to Muhammad. I am not racist. I am a pagan. I didn't say you're racist. I'm just saying. I'm just saying is that is that you need Jesus. Pagan is a multicultural. Pagan is multi-demonic. I Yeah. It's dark. <laughs> now angels of light are streaming through. Michael is going to talk. Now Raphael is going to He's living. Now um, Azazel, he's lost now. And he is just lost. The devil's out. Check him out. Okay, now Satan's out. Check him out. He's, 
All you um, demons are going to be in the lake of fire one day. And when this man wants to turn to Jesus, you'll be out of this man's body. It's not going to matter. Aren't you tired of living like this? You live in this. You speak with demons. Yes, not angels. They're demons. They're pretending to be angels to you. Yes, they are. The Bible says even the devil himself comes as an angel of light. What I'm telling you is these four angels that you think you're talking to are demons. What happened was they're not angels. Muhammad is a false prophet too. No. Gabriel was the prosecutor. He opted in the judge's seat. He fuck me over. Listen. You need Jesus, man. You need to turn from your sin and be free from demons. get to where Dave from. He's gay. He's from New York. You done for now? No, music. Alright, I can preach. So he said rock and roll music, hard music, it scares demons. Demons listen to him. No, no, it doesn't scare demons. Demons, demons are demons. intertwined in, in like secular rock and roll music. White demons like happy, happy music. That is about sex. He listens to angry It's full of demons, bro. <laughs> but he, he says he wants to be like that. Yeah. You got to be free in Jesus' name. As long as you're, as long as you're surrendered to sin and demons, God can, God can, God can give you new life. Allah is my friend. Allah is not your friend. Yes, he is. He's your enemy. That's what I'm telling you. These demons that are calling themselves angels are demons. He's, a, he's your enemy. Yes. He's just pretending to be your friend. Um, There's no friend like Jesus hey, well, who died on a cross well, for you. Do you I love had, Jesus? Why did Christ stab me but I hung him in the chest when he had the fucking goat seating on his chest? No, that's not what yes, happened. Yes, yes, yes. No, you're a liar. You're the father of liars. Hey, no, no, no. Those father, demons inside of you, of those, those demons inside of you, Demon, are going to burn in hell for eternity. Yes, you have a chance to be hey, saved. I'm carrying girls in my body. So it's all it's you have a chance to be saved, man. Hey, sodomy is out, guys. And it's against the law to leave a girl and have sex with guys. I'm a heterosexual. I like women only. I do have help. I only like women because I'm an angel. Fallen angel means alien. Alien. I am terrestrial. I am a descendant. There's a maker. Check, check, check. Uh, check. Do you really want to be Check one, two. So what's on? You want to be free? Check one, two. I rebuke you, demon. Yo, the fucking... You want to be free? Check one, two. Turn to Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You, you will not be laughing on the day of your death when you stand before Jesus and you, you find out that he's not the Jesus that your religion has taught you he is. But it's from Scripture. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he died on a cross to save your soul. The question is, what are you doing? What are you doing right now with your life? I'm preaching the gospel, ma'am. What are you doing right now? Are you going to be that cocky when you stand before God? What are you doing right now? Are you living for Jesus? Because if you're not living for Jesus, you're living for yourself or the devil. Yay, won't be cheering in hell. No more cheering. No more having fun, no more doing what I want to do, no more friends. Just instant regret when God in His great love is reaching out to you. God in His great love is reaching out to you to save you right now. And He's offered you this, this wonderful gift of salvation from the time He was in the earth to now. The question is, what are you, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with Christ Jesus? Are you creating a fake religion in your head that lets you continue to sin and live your own life the way you want to and say you're a Christian? Are you following Jesus? There's nothing else worth living for in this life. Not one thing. Because all things, you got to die and you got to leave it here. You're going to die. All your degrees, all your money, all your talents, everything that you, you staked your pride and your reputation on in this life, you can laugh and walk by and smile, but when you die, there will be no more laughing. There'll be no more smiling, no more pride, no more mocking. Only what you're going to do 
before God. And you're not going to be able to have your talents and your money and your, and your degree and your anything to justify what you did in this life to get into the kingdom of God. Only Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And faith, repentance from sin, and faith in Him, as the Bible says, that Jesus said, that Jesus said, He's the only way. He's the only truth and the only life. In all my years of preaching the gospel on the street corner, I can tell you one thing. Americans have a lot of pride. A lot of pride. Pride in their money, pride in their country, pride in their culture or skin color, pride in your degrees, pride in your career, pride in whatever your name is, pride in your TikTok account, pride in your Instagram, pride of life. The Bible says that the love of the world the love of the Father is not in the world, in the, in the love of the world. It says if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. An enemy. So all these things that you put your pride in and you laugh and you mock, you say, this guy's crazy. Not going to be so crazy when you stand before God. Not going to be so crazy when you realize that, man, this guy, he wanted to, he wanted to see me saved. And that's the truth. I want to see you born again, living for Jesus. All the pride of life that you're staking your life on. Pride in a sports team, maybe the Celtics, maybe the Red Sox. I've seen people fight over these things. I mean, we, we love these teams so much that we give them our money and put another man's last name on our back. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not putting another man's name on my shirt. I have my own name, plus the name of Jesus in my heart. Got this hair. Like on there, other my lip. But what what are you building your life upon? Is is Jesus just a little side religion for you that you go to a little building on Sunday and you think that you're good and a moral person and right with God because you go sit through a service or a mass or some kind of deception like that and you check you you you, you check your time card in on a Sunday at eight o'clock and. You check out at 10 o'clock, and then the rest of the week, you live like a devil. You live for the way you want to live. You watch all kind of filth on TV, listen to all kind of filthy music. Some people watch pornography. Some are homosexual. Some, some men think they're women. Women think they're men. We live for our money. You live for your pride of life. This is America. This is what America's like. America is full of pride, and God hates pride, the Bible says. God hates pride. The Bible says to humble yourself, all your pride. Bring it down like a little child before God. See, God blesses the humble, not the proud. Not the, not the man who stands up before God and says, Well, God, I gave all this money to the poor. I lived a good life. I didn't kill anybody. I'm not Hitler. You know, I had a, I had a good life, and I took care of my children, and, and all those things are good, but they don't get you into heaven. They don't get you into heaven. You can't build your life on your morals and expect God to just let you into his kingdom because nobody's that good. Nobody is good enough to get to the kingdom of God. It requires perfection, godly, biblical perfection. And only God can do that and can make a person perfect in him, can turn a person from their sin to being free from sin. This is the love of God towards you, that even in your pride, even in your mocking, even in your Satanism or your, your lust or whatever you are in, your feminism, your political leanings, whether you're a conservative Republican or a liberal Democrat or a libertarian, whatever you call yourself, God is still reaching out to you in his love. All these things don't matter. Only thing that matters, God bless you. Only thing that matters is Jesus. You see, God's kingdom is not of this world. I'm a child of God by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not my world. I'm just passing through here in this body, living for Jesus. I don't live for America. I love this country because I want to see it born again. But I don't live for votes and politics and money and all these other things. Even though we need money to survive, God knows we have need of it. But we don't live for it. That's not what I build my life upon. 
I don't chase after the American dream to get that degree, to get that money, and get that 401k plan, and get a house, and get a, get a dog and a cat and some children, and then go sit down on a porch in retirement and try to live the best life now. This is not what we build our lives on, because guess what? You're going to die, and all that is going to be coming crumbling down right in front of you. All this life that you built for yourself. And there's nothing wrong with working. There's nothing wrong with raising a family, of course. It's a godly thing to do. But it's not anything to build your life on. You don't build your life on your career. You don't build your life. See, a lot of people like to make a name for themselves on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or in your, in your career field or at a school or in your athletics. You want to make a name for yourself so your name can be big. So you could be popular, so you could be somebody, right? That's what you're taught, to live your best life now and to be somebody. Do your best, chase your dreams, live your best life now, self-esteem. All these things you're taught growing up. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that's who you should be living for. Don't believe a lie of this world. This is what, this is what the world wants you to think, to build your life upon yourself and to make your name great. Even some people that live a life of philanthropy, they put their names on buildings. They broadcast what they're doing and giving so everybody can look at them and say, what a great person this person was. Even that is not going to get you into the kingdom of God. Only Jesus. Oh, that's right, man. That's right. That's right. Come on. God bless you, man. That's right. Jesus has kicked the devil out of hell out of heaven and sent him to hell. He's kicked him out of heaven and sent him to, he's going to send him to the lake of fire. And all those that rejected Christ, doesn't matter how strongly you believe something, is it the truth? That's the, that's the question. It doesn't matter how your family or your country or whoever strongly believes something. You're so emotional, people want to fight over it and get emotional over their beliefs. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is, is what you believe, the truth. Whatever doctrine you believe, whatever religious book you believe, is it the truth? Because the Bible says that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And part of loving the Lord with all your mind is believing the truth, a consistent truth. And the only religious text that I've found to be consistently true is the Bible, the Word of God. God breathed, written by over 40 authors over a couple thousand years, and in perfect harmony in the original languages, perfect harmony all the way through, because God was writing it through holy men, filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He loves you. Why? Because God left a testimony, a testimony for you so that you wouldn't be lost in this world in your own sin, in your own pride, in your own arrogance. See, that's what the devil wants for you. The devil wants to blind you into believing things that aren't true about God. That's what the devil wants. But God wants to open your eyes to the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is, is the light of the world. For the Lord is a lamp to my path, and a, a light to my feet, and a lamp to my path. God is light. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was himself. In the book of Revelation, the city of God is lit, not by the sun or the moon, but by God himself. Dinosaurs. What about dinosaurs? They're in the book of Job, buddy. Read the book of Job. You see dinosaurs in the Bible. Nice try. Nice try, buddy. I love it when people just drive by and shoot ignorant things out of their mouth, and they don't want to back it up. They don't want to have an actual conversation. They say, dinosaurs and walk by. What does that mean? There's dinosaurs in the Bible. Guess he hasn't read it. There's dinosaurs in the Bible. Yes, sir. What about dinosaurs? Did you know that they're finding soft tissue in dinosaurs, sir? I guess they're not 65 million years old, are they? I guess they're not 65 million years old like the scientists thought because they're finding collagen, soft tissue, blood cells, all kind of things that couldn't possibly be 65 million years old. They're finding evidence of men with dinosaurs, couldn't possibly be 65 million years old. But no, atheists want to hold on to their fake Darwinian macroevolutionary theory that men developed from single-celled organisms through, through, this, through this primordial soup 
They believe in abiogenesis, which is having life come from non-life. This isn't science. This is faith. It's not science. Life does not come from non-life. You can't get life from non-life. You have to have life to create life. That's just logical, and that's what, that's what we observe in nature. Life comes from life. Life doesn't come from non-life. So God created all that you see in this natural world. He created man separate from the animals. You are not an animal. You didn't come from a monkey. You didn't come from whatever else that the evolutionists want to tell you. You were created in the image and likeness of God Almighty. You don't see chimpanzees walking around in courts, do you? Having jails and talking about logic and morals and things like that. No. Humans do that. Why? Because we have been created in the image and likeness of God. You have an eternal soul. God breathed his life-giving spirit into man's nostrils. He didn't do that to the animals, folks. Why do you think you come from an animal? That's what the devil wants you to believe. He wants to take away what God has created you to be, and that's God, godly as Christ. Jesus Christ died on a cross for you. He shed his blood to free you from the bondage of sin and death so that you don't have to die the second death. You know, there's a lake of fire that God has created. It's talked about in the Word of God that God created for the devil and his demons. The devil and his demons. He didn't create it for mankind, but he will send men that reject Christ into that lake of fire. That doesn't have to be you. God loves you so much that he sent his begotten son to die on a cross so that you could be free from sin. And you don't have to be a sinner anymore and offensive to God. You don't have to have the wrath of God on your, on your life anymore. You see, Jesus said in John chapter 3 that the wrath of God, he that does not believe in me, is condemned already. Why? Because the wrath of God abides on him as an unbeliever. And just because you say Jesus' name doesn't mean you believe either. Even the devils believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You see it in the Gospels. The demons call him the Son of God. The demons believe in God and they tremble. But they're still demons. So just because you say you believe in Jesus doesn't mean you're a believer in Jesus. Because the word in the Bible for believe, believeth, is somebody that's rolled their whole entire life unto Jesus. Kind of like putting on a parachute and jumping out of a plane. You could be in a plane that's burning down and falling to the ground and there's a parachute on the shelf. And you can believe in that parachute. You can believe that parachute can save your life. You believe in the materials made of, can, you can jump out of that plane, that parachute will save you. But you got to put on the parachute and jump out of the plane. And so a lot of Americans say they believe in Jesus. They go to church on Sunday. They do religious rituals, but they live just like the devil, watching pornography, homosexual, transgender, calling themselves Christians, living for selfish desires, cursing, drinking, getting drunk. There's a lot of Catholics that say they believe in Jesus but get drunk every weekend. My parents were one of them. My life was like that. Just because you say you're Catholic doesn't mean you're born again, man. The catechism is wicked. Catechism is wicked. Don't get me started on Catholicism. I came out of that. I came out of that wickedness. Just study the catechism and line it up with the Bible. It'll make you want to run from the Catholic Empire, that's for sure. Jesus said, you must be born again. It's not about sprinkling a little water on your forehead as a baby. That doesn't make you saved. You're not a sinner when you're born. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach that babies are sinners. And nowhere in the Bible does it teach that you should baptize babies or that baptism is going to cleanse you from sin. No, it's the blood of Jesus, the Bible says in 1 John. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Are you born again? Jesus said, unless you're born again of water, unless you're born of water and a spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you've been born of spirit, are you born again? I don't care if you go to church on Sunday, you go to a building. The church is the people of God. That's just a building made with brick and mortar. That's not the church. If you go there on Sunday, it doesn't mean you're born again. It doesn't mean you're going to heaven. The only way you're going to make it to the kingdom of God after this life, if you even care about your soul, like I care about your soul, is through Jesus Christ. So what are you living for? 
What are you living for today? Most people will just walk on by and don't even care. They'll laugh, they'll mock. I've been knocked out before. I've had my sign burned. I've had my hat burned. I've had people spit on me, curse me. I've had mobs try to attack me. All because I'm telling them that their sin is leading them to hell and that Jesus can save you. So what are you living for, folks? What, look at your life. Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruit. What is the fruit of your life? Is the fruit of your life sin? Do you say to yourself, we're all sinners? No, we're not all sinners. All have sinned. Some of us are no longer sinners because of Jesus. Are you still a sinner? Bible says, he that sins or sinneth, continues in sin, is of the devil. You don't want to be a devil. You don't want to be like Satan. You want to be like Jesus, right? If you care about your soul at all, God wants to save you. God wants to save you. I know in America we're very comfortable. We're very comfortable in our money, in our security, in our jobs, in our safety here. We complain about the smallest things, like they didn't put enough sugar in my Starbucks coffee. Oh, man, you ruined my day. Oh, man. You know, we, we complain about the smallest things in this country. I've seen countries, I've been to countries where they're suffering. I've seen it with my own eyes, real poverty. We have it really good here. And as a result of having it really good here, you have a lot of apathetic people that don't need God because they have everything they need. They have money, they have their houses, their security. Who needs God, right? I have a good life. I have a blessed life. God loves me because I'm so blessed with possessions, right? That's deception. That, there's a church in, in Revelation called the Laodicean Church. The Laodicean Church. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read that. The Laodicean Church would say the same thing, that we are rich and we're blessed of the Lord. You ever heard these word of faith preachers, preachers say, name it and claim it, just speak it into existence. We're blessed and highly favored, right? That's what they say. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said, And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning and the creation of God. I know thy works. And this is really a word for this country. I know your works, Jesus is saying. I know your works, that you are neither hot, no cold, nor hot. You're neither cold nor hot for Jesus. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's what Jesus says, man. Jesus said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I, you depart from me. These are people that are believers that have become lukewarm because they're so rich in, in material things that Jesus is going to spew them out of his mouth. What does it say? Because you say, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that you're wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. You see, the Laodicean church didn't, couldn't see their soul. They were so built up on their material goods, they had so much money, and safety, and security, that they didn't even see their heart was wicked, and empty, and poor, because they, were reject they weren't on fire for Christ. They left the life giver, and they lived for the things, and they, and they thought that because they were so blessed with material things that they must be blessed of God. They must be blessed of God. You see? I'm not taking that. Then he said, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and white raiment that thou may be clothed and the shame of your nakedness do not appear. See what God is saying? God is saying to come to me. He said, come to me, Jesus said. All ye that are weary and heavy laden, don't think because you're rich and full of material goods that you're okay with God or that you're blessed before the Lord. The most wicked devil on earth could be the richest man on earth. No, but you don't see that you're poor and wretched and naked and blind, and God wants to clothe you and feed you and make you truly rich in his spirit. All right? And anoint your eyes so that you can see. Right now you can't see. You're confident in your life, in your own name, and what you have. You can't see that destruction is right before you. 
You could fall into death right now. You don't know the hour of your death. You don't know when you're going to die. There's a lot of tough guys out here. There's a lot of tough guys in the streets that are so tough and proud and ready to hurt somebody, ready to <coughs> strike anybody that tries to insult them, ready to kill somebody, some of them. So tough that they don't even realize that they're, they, could be die they could be dead in two seconds. And then what? Where's all that toughness now? When you're dead and on the way to the lake of fire. But God is saying, come to me. Jesus is saying, come unto me and be free from your sin. Be free by the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. The gospel means glad tidings, good news. What is the good news? The good news is that you don't have to be a sinner anymore. You don't have to continue in sin anymore and be an offense to God, an enemy of God, under the wrath of God. God is showing his mercy on mankind and women, men and women, through Jesus Christ. He's given his son so that you don't have to die in your sins and you can be free from sin and overcome death and have eternal life in Christ Jesus. I have a job, ma'am. Why, why is it that people assume because I preach the gospel, you keep telling, prove it, prove it. Prove that God's not real, please. You can't prove a you negative. Do it the the other fact way. that you don't if understand. You oh, I can prove God's real. Go ahead, do it. What kind of proof you want? No, no, no. If you have Evidence. it, give us. Okay, evidence? Yeah. Look at that tree. Oh, for fuck's sake. Tell me, tell me, tell me, how do you get life from non-life? Show me. Uh, you're the one that creates you're the one that How do you get life from non-life? Apparently, you're magic God. How do you get life from non-life? It's called abiogenesis. Yeah, so yes. prove it, prove it. Show me some scientific proof that abiogenesis is true. That's right, you don't have it. That's right, you don't have any proof. You just believe it by faith that abiogenesis is true. This is so easily debunked. But See, these people are such snobbish. They walk in their snobbish pride. They have no evidence themselves that you can get life from non-life. There is no evidence, my man. No evidence of life from non-life. Show it to me and I'll believe you. But God is evident everywhere that life comes from life. You have to have a creator to have life. Life does not come from non-life. There is no evidence in science for abiogenesis. I can, I can refer you to many different people that can prove that. But you don't want to. Don't want to. So, praise God. What is that? You hear that? Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. But turn to Jesus, folks. He's the only way and truth in the life. He's the only one that can set you free. Do not be deceived by wicked people that tell you that life came from non-life. God created you in your mother's womb to be a follower of Christ Jesus. To be a follower of Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's calling you unto himself now. The gospel has gone out into the world. What are you doing with it? That's the question. What are you doing with the gospel? What are you doing with the gospel? He wants to save you. Turn to him with all your heart, folks. Praise God. We can't. Sir, you guys done preaching over here? Because we don't, we, we, we might start, and I don't want to interrupt anybody over here. We're gonna still keep preaching right here. We don't want to interrupt you guys, because we've been all, we've been in different yeah, yeah. spots. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, we don't want to, we're not gonna override anybody. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot dead than I thought. Of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we come up from Atlanta area. So. Yeah. 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 So. Yes, but we don't want to. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that aren't involved with SatanCon over in that general area where there's like right. a skating area. Oh, yeah. So we were preaching over there, like, I mean, because we saw a lot of preachers over here. I'm like, nah, so let these guys, whatever. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you guys are going to keep preaching, we won't over here. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Let me hold that.
Yes, sir. Okay. His message is, I have forgiven you. I have washed you. Well, that's not Just the case for people who are me. in their sin. So someone who stops sinning is the result of them fearing the Lord. And the beginning of wisdom is the fear, or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. You know, sometimes, so, sometimes, right, that the last thing that they would ever think that they would encounter is the love of Christ. Well, what about when Jonah preached the gospel? All he said that 40 days and God will destroy this this city. Yeah. What, what was the response of that? I hear you. Well, what was the response of that? Repentance. Exactly. Right. So it doesn't matter. A lot, a lot of these guys right here are very well educated in the scriptures, and in fact, uh, you'd are be surprised. For the provocation. Yeah, I, actually, I mean, they've read the scriptures. Actually, you'd be surprised how much they twist the scripture. I'm, I'm not saying yeah. they don't twist the scripture. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just saying that they've read yeah, yeah. the scripture. Of course. Sometimes they've read the scripture more than Christians have read the scripture. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, I would say those are professing Christians. Unfortunately, that's, true that's Christian probably that's the true average power. professing Christian. Yeah. Yeah. But so, someone who's following Christ will actually know the word better than the enemies of God. Yeah, and I've heard like guys like Aaron Ra, I've heard his debates and it's completely like I'll hear him talk about certain things like faith and the Bible and it's completely like it's laughable what he believes about what the scripture says it's easily debunked what he's saying about scripture like he's I mean if he wants to say in his lane when it comes to science and stuff like that that's his business but don't come walking in the scripture unless you have a sound argument you know what I'm saying so but yeah like he was saying concerning there's a scripture in Jude that says of some have compassion making a difference but on others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So some are going to respond to the fear of God, some are going to respond to the compassion of God. Like, you see the woman caught in adultery. She needed the compassion of God right there, and then Jesus told her to go and sin no more. The thief on the cross needed the compassion of God. They were both in a repentant state already. The Philippian jailer, Paul, showed him compassion because he was already like, what do I do to be saved? He's already in repentance. But there were others that were not that way. And they were told to repent or perish. Jesus in the second half of John chapter eight told the Jews that's not the Pharisees, but it says those Jews that said they believed in him, he called them children of the devil. You're of your father, the devil, and of your father's works you will do, right? He rebuked them. And those are people that said they believed in him but walked in sin. So you, you see like different sides of Christ Sometimes it's a loving, compassionate, merciful Savior. Yeah. Sometimes it's the holy, righteously indignant, you know, lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. So it's both sides. Yeah. And so for me, for me, it was the fear of God. Like I was a Catholic, you know, 20 years ago. I was a Catholic. I was a Catholic. I was thinking I was on the way to heaven. Peter was going to, I've been baptized, reconciliations, you know, RE, educated, you know, first communion. You know, I had the bishop slap me on the face at, at the at the uh, confirmation. Peter was gonna let me in the gates, man. You know, no matter what I did, I had another saint's name, man. But it's foolishness, you know. Well, until so, but God opened your eyes, right? By the fear of the Lord, it, it was actually out of the Book of Revelation. Yeah. Showed me where sinners are gonna end up. I looked at my life and I'm like, man, that's describing me. I'm gonna end up in hell. Oh God, what do I do? And He brought me to repentance through that. Then he poured out his compassion and love when I had come to a place of brokenness. I was a hard, proud, you know, whatever. And then for a year, I backslid into a relationship willfully, right? I got filled with demons, like literal demons came and lived inside of me. And God didn't, I didn't die. Praise God, I would have went to hell. But God brought me back to him. He sent a servant of God after me to put the fear of God in me again. Like, you need to leave this relationship. You're back in sin. And it led me to a place of repentance and, and the Lord cast demons out of me, like literal. I mean, I've seen my wife healed from an incurable disease, man. God is so good. But it's the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. And it's the compassion and mercy of Christ that leads us to the cross. I mean, so it just, it just matters on who needs what, right? Who needs what? Like some people need the fear of God at that moment. Some people need the compassion of God. It's easier to swallow 
the mercy and love and compassion of Jesus. It's harder to swallow the fear and wrath and judgment of God. I, so. I, I believe that you need both. It's just sometimes um, tactfully, right? Yes, like tactfully. About, you know, um, That's right. Some can be a, a, a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Sure, yeah, right? if you don't have like, love. Enge engaging, right, engaging with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah. It's a little, lot more than, you know, coming up and sounding like you're just, you know, squawk, you know, squawk well, box. And, there, sometimes, I'm not saying yeah. that we don't appreciate there is a place people for being out here and being bold and, and bringing the gospel. We want the kingdom sure. expanded, right? For sure. You know what I mean? But, like, until we come to that understanding of the scriptures, right, every single one of us, none, none of us here came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, who he truly was, right, without no. the revelation, right? God right. moved the veil from our eyes, right? And what? that's a supernatural. So we don't fight sure. against flesh and blood, right? No. We fight against princi uh, principalities. Right? But it does say in scripture, how can they hear without a preacher? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, so there is a place for preaching. You know, you see the public preaching of Paul, Jesus, you know, the apostles, Stephen. You know, he's not an apostle. I'm saying Stephen, separate from the apostles. And there is a place for public street preaching. Now, granted, there's a lot that do it wrong. They're just reviling, calling people names, yeah. saying, you know, just all kind of vile stuff. I've heard it, you know? And it makes genuine free street preachers, we get bunched in the same thing, like Westboro Baptists. They're, they're heretics, Calvinist heretics, and they're really wicked. I don't know if you know about them. There's others, I'm not gonna name other names, but but uh, they, 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 they don't have the love of God, they don't. But there is a place for rebuke and exhorting and bringing a real message, you know, publicly and openly, like seriously. Do you understand, though, the difference between preach a message of condemnation and bringing a message of invitation? Well, it was both in the Bible. Jesus literally said, I'll tell you who to fear. Fear him that has the power to cast the soul and the body into hell. He also said, do you think you're better than these sinners on which the Tower of Siloam fell on? He said, I tell you nay, but unless you l repent, you shall all likewise perish. So but fear, fear, it, it, it means more, in my mind, it means more like reverence, and that comes when we, when we encounter God, and it, I mean, it, it can be in different ways, like. But that's what they say well, in Jonah's name, yeah. They experience the fear of the Lord and it produce repentance. I mean, the, the Bible literally says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. You know that. So, so the fear of the Lord, it's like, I mean, a, a really small, weak example would be like a stoplight, like in, in heavy traffic. You fear to run that stoplight because you're going to get hit by a car. Or you fear to disobey a sign that says bridges out, stop driving, because you're going to drive on a bridge and you're going to fall into a ravine. There's a fear there, and that fear is what the fear of God is. It's like, you, you need to stop sinning, or you're going to end up in the lake of fire. That brings a fear that's like, okay, what do I do? Like, okay, I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm under the wrath of God. Jesus talks about the wrath of God in John chapter 3. Everybody loves to quote John 3.16, but they don't finish that passage. There's some really heavy stuff in there, and he only said it to Nicodemus. Praise God we get to hear it from the Gospel of John, but he said he who believes not is condemned already says because the wrath of God is abiding on them already right so so the message of condemnation is like this it's opening people's eyes to the condemnation that's already on them not that we're condemning them Co condemning judgment would be like what the Catholics did in the Inquisition when they dug up Saints you know like who, who was it uh, uh, William Tyndale dug up his bones and they anathematized him and condemned him to hell and the Catholics did that a lot they, they, they took it upon themselves to try to judge people and have the authority to say, you're going to hell. That's wrong. But to tell somebody this is why you're going to hell and opening their eyes to the condom, it's, it's no different than a doctor exposing cancer to his patient. Like, you have cancer. You need to get this treatment or you're going to die. Same thing. And that puts a fear in you like, man, I better go get this treatment or I'm going to die. Yeah. There's a, that's a healthy fear. Yeah, you no, know? that's, that's kind of what I'm That's kind of what the fear of God is. Yeah. That, that's you know? what I was saying at the start, is the gospel is light. You know, Jesus Christ was the light of the world. You know, and he was the light of the world. And 
there's an example that I used earlier while preaching. It's like turning a lamp on in a dark room. It just reveals what's already in there. Well, most of what I'm saying, we're not, we love that you're out here preaching the gospel. We would we never say, hey, don't. Well, I don't know these guys. We're, we're together. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not right saying they're right wrong. There, that sounds like preaching at them instead of preaching to them. Right? Yeah, it's, I don't, it's, it's, I don't it's know their motives. I don't know them. That's the thing. You can't just judge someone based off the appearance. It actually tells us to not do that. It tells I, us that I get to it, judge it also talks judgment. about tact. Like when Paul was walking around, um, when Paul was walking around Greece, right? He was looking for the tact. He was looking for the open door. How do I deliver the gospel to sure. this? To this, to this type of society, sure, right? Of and he saw, saw the, um, st you know, the statue for an unknown, yeah, unknown so are, guy. Are you saying that we're doing that? So I can't. No, no, he's talking about them. What are you talking about them? I'm, I'm saying, I don't know them. I'm no. saying tact. No, I know that. Yeah. The Lord, the Lord gives us tact. He gives us discernment. He gives us yeah. some insight, right? Of how do I reach them? Most of them, most of them already know. Like they, they came up and took a picture with babies who are murdered here. We know that they're sacrificing children, right? You and I both know sure. that it's real. It's real, real stuff, right? Yeah. He came up and took a picture with. I was watching it. He took up a picture, picture and threw, threw up a, a devil sign, right? Because, because they enjoy that. They already know. Well, if you that read you're gonna that you're going to say that. If you read the Satanic Temple's beliefs, you'll you'll notice two things. One, they're obsessed with Antoine LaVey and distinguishing themselves from the Church of Satan, and two, they're obsessed with triggering Christians. Like literally. I mean, you look all over their website, donations, right? You want to give 666 and and there's all kind of like language in their website that is meant to trigger maybe religious Christians, you know? All it does for me is give me a broken heart for them, yep. you know? So and I'm, whether, I'm hear that. whether we're preaching, yeah. whether we're preaching to them, which we were preaching, or we're talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, which we were trying to do as well, yep. it, it's still going to be a witness to them before God. Yep. They're not running away from God because of some preacher that was preaching the gospel. They're running away from God because of their sin, point blank. Now, God, God, God knows how many times he's tried to reach whoever. I don't know. I don't know their heart. I don't know how many times God is, maybe they need a message like this. I don't know. That's why I, I, what he's saying is true. I don't know. I, don't, I can't judge what's going on, you know, because who knows what's going on in somebody else's heart. I don't know. There's been times where people misjudge us, and I'll have, I have a YouTube channel, and people email me, right, and send me, send me messages through YouTube and stuff of people that have given their lives to Christ. They thought they were a real Christian, they gave their lives, and we're thinking nobody's listening. Yeah. But there's that person off in the corner that's just like sitting there like, we didn't even know. Yeah. And they gave their life to Jesus when they went home or something like that, you know? So, so, so he's going to, you know, Paul writes the scripture, who are you to judge another man's servant? Before God, he, is, he upholdeth him, right? So I'm very careful. I, I'm, 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 re I'm really, I'm really careful to do that. So there are some tactics that I would avoid personally, but who knows what the Lord is doing? He can even use, like, what did what did Paul what did Paul write? He said, whether in what pretext or gain, I'm I gl I'm, I'm thankful that Christ is preached. Like Paul was talking about this. There's people that preach Christ to my sorrow and to their gain, but he said, I thank God that Christ is preached, even if it's done in a weird way or like this. Christ is still being preached. And 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 now me personally, if I'm with another brother in Christ and they start going a certain way, I've, I'll sit down and counsel them. Like, hey, brother, what's in your heart? I've been counseled before. You know, like, hey, you know, I, I, I want to give you a word from the Lord. You know, I think God wants you to have a little bit more long suffering, like with, with people. Just remember where you came from, right? What kind of sinner you were. Remember that when you're out preaching. That brings a lot of humility, man, because I came from the same pit. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of changes the way you preach. I've, I've been street preaching for like eight years. Yeah. And I had to take a good three months off after the first two or three years because I was getting a chip on my shoulder from sinners, man. We, we live in Atlanta area. So we preach a lot around Atlanta in the Southern Bible Belt, which is just so full of hypocrites. And I've been knocked out from my faith. I've had, I've had my sign taken in, in Midtown Atlanta where the homosexual community is and burned. My hat burned. I've had pee thrown on me. I've had equipment destroyed. I've had speakers shoved in my teeth, all kind of stuff. And that can develop a little chip on your shoulder, man. You can start to start to harden up a little bit. Like, man, you know, these sinners deserve hell. I'm going to tell them about, you know, the condemnation. You know, you're going to hell and blah, blah, blah. 
and, and I'm not doing it anymore in a heart of love, wanting them to be free, I'm losing patience with them. So I had to take like a two month, two month break, man, and just get broken hearted again, you know? Yeah, of course, yeah. So, so it, it really, it really, doing this, one person doing it may be doing it in the heart of Christ by the Spirit. Another person doing it could be doing it in the flesh, and they could be saying the same thing in the same way. You just don't know. It's hard to tell. I, I, I agree. I, I agree with you. No, we should have tact. Yeah. We should obey the Spirit. Yeah. We should obey I mean, the Spirit. If you had a sign, right, that said, Jesus loves you, it's not too late. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not yeah. too late. So, you know, it's like, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know, the, the last thing we think that God could be working through, and He's working through something that we last least expected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I absolutely had those experiences. So, yeah. Question. yeah. You know, so. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so. so, there was just like a lot of, uh, you know, especially being in such a liberal city, right? You know, they're, the media, rather than focusing on them and making them look ridiculous, you know, they'll do. They're going to turn the cameras towards us, course. and they're going to try to make us look ridiculous, course. right? They're going to be like, oh, but but that's the that's 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 why we're fools for Christ. Yeah, it's the foolishness of preaching, man. I, I've had the same thing. I was at an Ariana Grande concert in Atlanta one time preaching, and the media actually twisted it. In fact, Ariana Grande herself started tweeting out. Not even knowing the situation that we're the ones that got attacked and mobbed and, and equipment destroyed. And it got twisted in the media as if we were provoking people and saying things that we weren't saying. When really it was the mob. We were just talking Good job, about Good job. we were just Good call, job. calling out we were calling out sin and repentance from sin and love in Christ and things like that. But it got twisted in the media <coughs> against us, you know, in Atlanta. So so I've experienced that myself, you know, so can I share with you yeah go ahead a bit of like when you were talking about preaching this yeah. passage came to mind that it was in isaiah 61 but it's also what jesus said in, when he was walking the earth sure um that like it just reminds me of like it talks about preaching in it yeah maybe you'll receive something from this but. is it when he was in nazareth the Spirit of the yeah, Lord God in Nazareth. is upon me, uh -huh. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That's right. He has sent me the meek, also meaning the poor. This is the old King James. What <laughs> version of the Bible do you it's have? It's the King James. Oh, good. I'm, I'm interpreting the these and that. Oh, go ahead. I read King James. You don't have to yeah, interpret. Too. <laughs> so. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called, the, called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Try it. And they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. That's right. Now notice the context is preaching the gospel to the poor, the but, meek. But we're, they're and, poor in spirit. Like, sure. They, but what, 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 what that is, that's a broken saying, heart. So God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners yeah. in, in, however, in, their, in their pride. However, if we're assuming, see, there's people sitting here. Hey, what's up? One thing, no the other day I was asking God, like, show me, like, I was kind of like looking at the satanic temple stuff. Uh -huh. and, oh, yeah. Looking through things and I was like, God, show me, like, what is it that they're grasping for? And what do they need? Sure. Um, and I felt like he was showing me that they're, they're grasping for, like, identity right. and community and, like, purpose. There's also the part that's rebellion to God, but they don't really know him. They don't really know his heart. So they're rebelling against sure. even what they don't know. Partly, right. like, you, in your experience, you've had, you've had a lot of demons oh yeah and i feel like it's similar like the enemy will like wind us Try. from the truth for sure we all have the same enemy but it manifests in different ways like 
they're putting forth all their whatever, like their signs and stuff, essentially through you know the satanic temple and all the things they're saying. But like these are people, just like anyone else, who like our primary desire is connection with God and and with people. Sure. And I think deep down, like they all are desiring that, but there is a facade. Like you're seeing them come dressed up and all this stuff, but like these people struggle with anxiety. They struggle sure. with like all these things. Absolutely. And having, they need an encounter with Jesus. They need sure an do. encounter with the truth. That's right. Not necessarily like condemnation. Jesus actually said, "I don't come to condemn the world." Why though? Why? Because the world is already condemned. He says that in John chapter 3. He didn't come to condemn the world because it's already condemned. But he also said, I came to bring a sword. We know it because we all have the law written on our hearts. Not all of us. We do. No, not unless you're, not unless you're in Christ. I thought we all do. No, no. We all have a conscience, but we don't all have the law written in our hearts unless we're born again. Because he writes it on the fleshly tablets of our heart. According to Paul in Romans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all have a conscience. Sure. So, sure. Um, some of us, some of them have seared it, have hardened it. Now, let me ask you a question. When you look in the Bible, was John the Baptist the same as John the Apostle? Like his ministry, the way he. No, he was more. He was more like, like rebuking, calling to repentance. John was a little bit more tender. Even though, if you read First John, he was very hard against sin. Right, and he's so, writing to people who are already Christians. Sure, he's, he's, but he's giving them his like, hey, look at you know. But, but here, here's the thing. He's calling here's the them thing. to account. So. God might use you in a softer, compassionate, more sensitive way, but he might use me to bring a harder word to people. And you can't judge me because I bring that hard word, because God uses different people. That's why he sets the body of Christ the way. You might be able to reach some people that I can't reach, and I'll reach some people you can't reach. But we just have to walk in the, in the, according to the grace and knowledge that God has given us, because some have been given more measure of faith than others, and some people have given different gifts than others. Some people have given different ministries than others. Some are more prophetic, some are more hard-hitting, some are more soft and compassionate. But as long as it's all in the Spirit of God, I can't judge you. And that's why so, I feel so, like it's so important because I, I do see like people moving in a spirit of religion or, you know, different things. And What's the spirit of religion? Keeping a bunch of rules and regulations. Well, what did Jesus say? He said, if you love me, you'll do what I obey said. my commandments. But it's, it's in response to right. his love. But there's a difference between trying to keep a bunch of rules and regulations and people don't have the spirit. Actually, but when people you... People who don't have the spirit. People who aren't, who aren't born again, right? They're, right. They're, they're, they're professing God, but they're actually, they have religion. But they, they need people. to see their need for God. If they no, don't no, see no, their I, need I, for I, God. The reason it's like, it's like this, right? I, I come out of a similar lifestyle. Yeah. Just like this. Okay. Right? Just like that. So are yeah. you going back to them and tell and trying to bring them out? That's what we're doing. Yeah. That's oh, what good. We're doing. Yeah. We'll be doing street evangelism tomorrow. Sweet. Right? Where at? Um, you hear the Revive Boston event that's taking place? So um, right now, like, we, 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 we were in this right here yesterday, the yeah. conference. We had about 60 to 80 Christians wrote in rotation yeah. through a 24-hour period yesterday doing high praise is an intercession, yeah. intercessory yeah. communion, everything in the conference. Are you part of an organization or something? I belong to the, uh, one of the largest spirit-filled Bible-believing churches in Boston. I do street evangelism. I belong to a ministry, evangelistic okay. outreach ministry. I'm one of the leaders of the street team. Okay. Okay. I'm our ministry. Well, I mean, that's all good. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, yeah I'm, I'm, I don't need this. This is, what we were, this is what we were doing yesterday. <laughs> okay, cool. This was us yesterday. Right? So that place is filled with the spirit right now. They're calling the praise of God. The presence of the Lord was palpable. Okay. I thick in that place. Yesterday. Yeah. So they're now, walking. Now, would, would 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 you and these people consider yourself sinners? Well, we can do all sinners, saved by grace. What do you mean? The Bible I, I don't know what the you Bible mean. doesn't call no, believers we're sinners. Right. That's right. We're saints. I, I just want to make sure because yeah. a lot of people are under a misconception that they can't stop sinning, <laughs> or that they're still sinners, or that we definitely have to sin. When the Bible doesn't teach that. That we have power because we talk about the Holy Spirit. Right, we, we have talk power about, to overcome sin, and God breaks down strongholds. That's in right. Our, and we're that's all, right. We're always being changed more, you know, more steps forward than back. But that doesn't being have to do with sin, though. It's transformed. That has nothing well, to do John with sin. John said in his first letter, "If we say that we're without sin, then we make." What's the lie. context of that? I got Read the scripture before and after verse seven. 
what does it say? Cleanse from all unrighteousness. Cleanse from all unrighteousness. So he's not he's not he's not saying everybody. He's talking about somebody that number one, he's coming against the Gnostics. Oh, so. Gnostics Gnostics believe that you can sin all you want in your flesh and your spirit doesn't get touched. Right? And so so there was a Gnostic teaching that he was coming against there. Secondly, he if you if you read it in context, read the whole letter. I mean there's if you take that one scripture out, I see how you can come to that conclusion. But he's not talking about like if we say we have no sin, like and sandwiched in between two scriptures that says you can be delivered from all sin. He's talking about people that have sin and pretend like they don't have sin or they say they don't have sin when the Holy Spirit's convicting well, them that they do that, have sin. But right, it says, you know, come to come to one another confessing our sins to one another. If right? you have sins. That doesn't mean we all have you're assuming that we all have sins. See, the Bible literally says that the blood of Jesus Christ oh, cleanses us, I mean, cleanses us from, from all, all unrighteousness, right? sin. Right. Even but if sin. we don't hold ourselves to account, right? Like if I'm just, if I'm literally like having dirty thoughts about the woman just walked by and the high heels. And okay, shirt, right? but that doesn't mean it's a sin. It's a temptation. You can have a temptation. Jesus was tempted. He's not a sinner. Okay. It's what you do with that temptation. He literally, he literally said, he literally said, he said, if you even think about. No, no, that's not what he said. After no, 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 that's sinning. not what it says. It says. If you lust after a woman in your heart, he didn't say think. Okay. Think in your heart. If you're lust. lusting, if you're thoughts. So, so if you're tempted, are you in sin? Well, I mean, if you're. Is temptation a sin? Okay. Because hmm. okay. if you say yes, then Jesus was a sinner because he was tempted. It says in Hebrews. It says it said. It says in Hebrews. It says in Hebrews he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Yeah. And so we are also tempted. So when that girl walks by and you're tempted with a thought from the devil, what do you do with that? Okay. What does it say in Corinthians? Yeah. It says, "For God has made a way of escape yeah. out of every temptation." Yeah. Yeah. So we can choose that way of escape. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to not to, to sin because we could sin. That's why John writes, "If, not when, right. if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father." We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't say you. I didn't say. Now, now you're coming up with another thing. That's 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 that goes without we saying. We only have that if we have fellowship with God. And received the blood of Jesus. Yeah, we need his. We need his power. There's no man that can overcome sin in his own flesh. I mean, flesh. we can go so far in our own willpower, but we will fall, and we will fall in our own just strength. Like you yes. Did, and all those demons came back, just like the scripture. Well, says. that's because I willfully turned away from God. It's right. not that I couldn't have continued with God and I would right. be free from sin still. Some of these people do not know him at all. Yeah, we're talking about something different. We're talking about something different. Yeah, Christians. Yeah, yeah, us right. yeah. Christians. Yeah. The, the, the Bible doesn't call sa the believers sinners oh. ever. In fact, when you call a yeah. saint a it sinner... Bothers me when Christians yeah, when you call a saint a sinner, it's like you're slapping God in the face, calling them unclean. Like, God, Jesus, you're not powerful enough to overcome sin in that person's life. He's a sinner. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Really. Like in my life, man, I've seen the power to overcome sin and not and not walk in it anymore. Now, I could sin. I'm not saying I couldn't, but I know that I don't have to sin anymore, especially if I'm abiding in Christ. Jesus said, if you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit. I mean, what does Paul write in Ephesians? You know, in Ephesians, what is it, 3, where he talks about departing from the old man, Romans 8. He said, for now there's no condemnation that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but in the spirit. All through the Bible, there's what promises, promise. What's up? What does it mean to abide in Him? Abide in Him? So abide in His Spirit. In prayer and fasting, worship, walking with Him throughout the day. When you're tempted in your mind, you submit to God, resist the devil, He'll flee from you. That's abiding in Him, so choosing Him. So what do we say about pastors, right? Like we look at, we look at sexual sin, for instance, right? Even yeah. if it's just self-pleasure, right? Sure. Um, sexual sin, how many, just even pastors, right? If um, there really are pastors, because there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. I mean, you, you, you got a lot of, you, like, you got a lot of born again believers, right? Like, sure. For instance, like, I come out of significant background of darkness, right? Sure, sure. And God delivered me from some things, Praise right? God, me too. A lot of things. <laughs> and then he left me with some things to struggle with for a while. What do you right? mean he left you with some things? There's some strongholds. You know, he left me with some strengths. God he, doesn't do that. Oh, he doesn't he, leave you with things. He doesn't leave you with things. No. Right? In fact, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, it he says... He delivers you from everything. You're just going to walk in absolute perfection. That's what cutting off the right hand is. I, listen, I, listen. I understand that he sees you as perfect, right, in his eyes. Why does he see you as perfect, though? Because you're covered in the blood of his no, son. No, 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 no. You're, you're not just covered. The Holy Spirit. You're not just covered. You're, you're filled cleansed. With the Spirit. You're cleansed. You're clean. That's right. You're, yeah, he sees That's right. you as cleansed, right? That's right. Okay. Sanctified. But in what I'm 1 saying Corinthians is, 6.10. What you're saying is, you know, the God sees you as perfect. Does that mean you're going to walk in perfection? 
There's that's a difference the whole, between that's difference. the whole point of Christ in us, the hope of glory. I understand right, by his righteousness. No, 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 not by his righteousness, by his power. Our There's right, no be power, righteousness, yeah. but here's, the, here's what no, I'm saying. His is, power. You're saying that you can you can be freed, right? Yes. You can be freed from some things, right? And you might still struggle with some things. Well, first John says cleanses you from all sin. Right. Can we, cleanse you from now, all now sin. We still have cleansing, a, right? Cleansing from sin. Yeah. And in, 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 in the Father's eyes, you being cleansed from sin. You're no, you no longer have the combination of sin, right? And you may walk in the perfection that which Christ is in you because your his perfection is imputed to you. No, no, right? no, no. Okay, okay, here we go. Here comes Calvinism now. Are you Calvinist? No. The 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 Calvinistic concept of pewter righteousness is not in the Bible. There wasn't a trade-off. Like Jesus received the wrath of God on the cross, and we get credit for His righteousness. That's not in the Bible. Then we we imputed walk by the means, righteousness of His spirit. Isn't that exactly? No, 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 no. Okay, so okay, so when, when so then, what is the righteousness of the saints exactly in Revelation? The white robes is the righteousness of the saints, not right. the righteousness of God. We're righteous because of what the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not righteous because we get credit. That's 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 a covering. Jesus said to cleanse the inside of the cup, not just have a covering of His blood. He cleanses us from within, right? So we're righteous because of Him. It's not from ourselves. But this imputed means accounted as. There was. It doesn't mean trade-off. It's, so right, it's not a trade-off. Right, that's wait, a, here's that's, a, here's that's a perfect example of what I'm yeah. saying, right? I know, I know a pastor who's walked in Christ, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. been in Christ for a long time, right? And when he first came to Christ, you know, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, right? Sure. And he, you know, he, you know, he was freed from some things, right? Sure. He, was, he was freed from smoking, freed from these other things, right? And then he was saying to another Christian, right? Talking about him, talking about, you know, talking about him being, you know, why aren't you free from cigarettes? Why aren't you free from cigarettes? Because God did a certain thing in his life, right? But the very day that that he had a moment of weakness, guess who walked in the door while he was smoking a cigarette? The guy he'd been preaching to about the cigarettes. Well, when you say right? moment of weakness, what does that mean? Yeah, like you said, you 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 are, you're saying you're without weaknesses. You're without you know you're without flaws. No 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 no. Without... Okay, so so th we got to change the language. Let's get biblical with it. We have a flesh that can be tempted, right? right? And when we're tempted, we have a choice to either. So if you're tempted and you give into that temptation, right? You're a are sinner. You, are you are you not are you not in Christ? No, not at that moment. No. When you're in sin, you're not in Christ. No. Okay, so when you're in sin, when you're not in Christ, so that's so right. At, at that, so that that's why are you John, not saved anymore. Is that what you're That's why if you die in that condition, no. And so it talks about a Romans 11 being cut off. That puts right, so, a lot. And what, so, it, what did Jesus so what say? It doesn't put somebody, a lot on us. If, if somebody provokes me, right? If somebody, you talked about people provoking you on the street. Have you ever responded, right, in the wrong, in the wrong spirit? Have you ever came, you know what I mean? If you ever came to somebody, like when you said you had the chip I, on your shoulder. I've never cursed at anybody. When but you said I, you had the chip on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were giving in to that. For that, sure, that, that I chip, was. Right, so you were in sin. Exactly. So you were no longer saved at that moment. No, I was no longer, I was in sin now. And if I die in a condition of being bitter towards somebody, then I'm not going to heaven. I don't think no, that's... No, no, no. Show me in the Bible. God's, God's, God's grace, man. What's is, grace? Is, is, is Titus so 2. Go, what's grace? What's great? Grace is undeserved favor. No, no, no. Titus mercy. 2. That's mercy. Titus 2. No, mercy is withholding due punishment. No, no, no. Yeah, it Titus is. 2. Mercy is withholding Titus 2, due man. punishment. Titus 2. Favor Titus 2. It says this. undeserved favor. Titus 2. It's like your kid writes on the wall with a crayon. Instead of punishing him, you go and take yeah, him off ice cream. Hold on, hold on. We, well, let's get scriptural. Titus 2 says this. For the grace of God. Grace is the power to do something. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, right, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's what the grace of God does. Right, but your standard, what you're holding people to, is a, there's not a Christian out I'm not there. holding people to any standard. I'm telling them to die to themselves. Right. And come to the revelation that Paul came to at the end of Romans 7. So what you're saying <clears> is that but, oh, but all, right, somebody comes to Christ, they give their life to Christ, all of a sudden they're going to come perfect. They're going to overcome every single thing in their life. That's what the Bible teaches. Never, I'm, not, I'm saying the possibilities of that. Like, no, no, no. But, but the Bible teaches says that. We live from grace to grace, and everyone but is given a different portion. That's of not grace. talking about sin, though. That's talking about grace to grace. That's grace, not talking about sin. A different portion of the Spirit, right? Right, but to, that's not talking about sin, so though. So you, you have people who are far more anointed in certain things, walk in more power than other people. But that has nothing to do with sin. That portion of Scripture is not talking about sin. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 10, 6, 9, and 10, of, you, of such were some of you, after listening, listening a bunch of sins, right? And he's saying, of such were some of you, but now you are sanctified, past yeah. tense, cleansed, justified, right? right? So how can you be sanctified, but yet still need to be more sanctified? 
Well, you're sanctified in his eyes. That's, it's not about works. No, no, it doesn't you know say sanctified, you're sanctified in his eyes. You're sanctified in his eyes. You're, 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 you're seated in seats of authority in heavenly places. I grew up places. a bit Calvinist, but not, not really. No, I'm Cal not, Calvinism I'm not, I'm is so Calvinist. bad. Trust me, I'm not Calvinist. Yeah. Um, but, but, but that's the promise of First Peter. Same thing, divi the divine nature. Justification is different than sanctification. Of course. Justification it's illegal. Is like, it's a legal in term. In the courtroom of sure. heaven. I agree with that. Like, before God, we are totally pure. Like, the enemy is going to try to say all this no, crap no, no. about us. No, no, no. <laughs> Not pure, but justified. We are we are righteous in his sight because of Jesus' righteousness. But, but, okay, you're using different terms now. But, but just, you I just said justified is a legal term. Justification right. is a process. No, that's yes, not what the Bible is. teaches. Absolutely. Show me scripture for that. Sanctification is a process. Show me scripture for that. So that's says, why you get discipled. What well, is a disciple? That's disciple growing in the student. knowledge of, right. of God. Well, that's as not you, talking as about you sin. Come in contact, just as Paul said, not, I pray that you would be increasing in the knowledge of God. The not talking about sin. The more you come into the knowledge of God, the more encounters that you have with God, right? not talking about sin. I've known it in my own life. The more the more God reveals himself to me, right? The more I'm changed into the image of him. The Let me more ask you a I question. Walk in greater and greater levels of freedom. Is God able to sanctify somebody completely at the time they're born again? Absolutely. Okay, so yes, then there we go. So but you but your so, process so why, of walking with God is But why do you why do you apply process? that your that human thinking process to everybody? That's not what the scripture I'm teaches. I'm not saying it can't happen. Okay. I mean, but what I'm saying is you're condemning I'm like not condemning it's, anybody. It's, it's, it's the same thing as you're saying. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. You're condemning Calvinists, said. right? You're basically condemning Calvinists. You already just did that. I'm, I'm you saying. You just did that, right? So hold on. Do you know second. what condemning means? You're, you're condemning Calvinists. You're you know what condemning means? It, right? so, Their doctrine is a false doctrine leading people to hell. Okay, were, were you, you, were, here's, the, here's the thing, right? Like, I'm really not, non, I'm non-denominational, right? I don't and, know what and, that means. In many, in many respects, right? Not I just believe the Bible. I, I, right, we focus on the essentials. And a lot of people out here, right? That's what we talk oh, about religionism essentials. and legalism and things like that. Actually, you know what? A lot of people who might not have the intelligence to even understand the scriptures and the manner of what you do have no idea of these legal terms that I'm saying, but they're still walking in Christ. Of course, right? and they're, they're still, free from sin. And they're free from sin. And they don't right? even know but, it. But, but, I mean, know the scriptures. Right. They don't, That's what Paul talks know, about, about the Gentiles. The matter is, what you're saying is that somebody couldn't struggle with something because of the moment. They have no idea. What does what struggle that mean. mean, though? What do you mean by struggle? Struggle with sin. Being tempted, you mean? Yeah, maybe being tempted. Okay, everybody's with sin tempted. Maybe give in to that sin. Well, right? they don't but have to give in to that sin. Okay, or you're, so, so you're saying they don't have to, but you're no. saying that nobody is ever overcome by anything, and the moment that they are, they're out of Christ. They're all what, of a what sudden. I, what I'm saying. I'm not saying continuously. I'm, I'm telling you what the scripture says. You can argue right. with God, not me. I'm telling you what the scripture says. But you're says. saying the same thing about the Calvin, the Calvinists. This is what the scripture the promises. Thing that the but Calvinists are doing, but in reverse. Because they're wrong. I'm well, saying their doctrine is wrong. They twist the scripture. So it's none very of that easy to really prove. Matters. Yeah, it does matter I, we, because I mean, if you believe, right, if you believe a problem, false here's doctrine, here's the problem with the church, right? Here's the problem with the church. What's going you're on? You're going right? to tell about the problem here's with the church. Here's the problem with the church. Now, now, hold on now, hold on now. When you say the church, be careful because you're talking about the bride of Christ. Okay? We're talking about the true church, not. People that you are think deceived. The church is unity, unified not in the United States people right now? that are. You think the church is who's, listen, who's in the church? A, I think he has a point. Who's in the church? Who is the church, my the man? The church is the bride of Christ. That's right. The true spirit-filled right. body of believers. Right. They are unified. Right. Not the false so-called church. Unifi so you think they're unified when they won't work with other churches? They won't come out? I mean, you well, see these people. How am I going to work with a church if they're in sin? I'm not going to work with any so-called church that's walking in sin no, just, and believing doctrines that are taking people to hell. Never. In fact, Paul warns against such things. Listen, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying Never. is, for instance, do I don't care when they if they shake and speak in fake tongues and and say they're filled they're, with the they're, Spirit. They're, they're, you could you could you could you could say that right there, but you're also being judgmental like a coward. Of course, I'm you being say, judgmental. You're, you're say, I'm supposed to be. My, my, you're my friend, it's all fake. the gift of tongues is not stringing a bunch of English syllables together and speaking it out. The gift of tongues is an actual languages. I know, angelic language. I no, not angelic. Ange yeah, angels in angels, of angels, angels don't and walk men. around going hut to to shit to to people to each other. They don't walk around doing that. It's not a language. It's just gibberish, just like in 1 Corinthians 13. It's clanging symbols. Paul Paul warns against such things in 1 Corinthians 14 and 15. Are right, you speaking tongues? I don't I don't have the gift of tongues. No. You I don't might. have this. So, so you don't have the gift of tongue. Paul says, you don't know what it is. I do know but, what it but is. You, how do you know what it is? If because you don't I can look tongue? in the Bible, and I've heard other people with the gift of tongues, and I can study the Bible to see that that's the gift of tongues, and I don't have that. 
Paul said, do all speak with tongues? Right, no. You understand other people with the gift of tongues, so you can you I can, can interpret their tongues. I can tell you right now. You can interpret tongues. Okay, so if you spoke in Hebrew right now, supernaturally, yeah. and I supernaturally was able to interpret that language. Wait, you have the gift of interpretation? I didn't say that. I'm just saying that that's, that's the gift of interpretation. <laughs> like tongues is not, that. tongues is not, all that stuff. That's really? not tongues. No, it's not. Uh, it's not in the Bible. Spirit. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. I definitely can clearly see that you've never had an experience. It's quite obvious that really? you've never had an experience with the Spirit coming on you and you're oh. speaking in tongues. You just admitted it. You just said you, you don't that? have the gift of tongues. Right? Of course. So I, because I'm going to tell you. You all this, speak right? with tongues? Before, for instance, right? No, you're right. Before, before I had tongues. Before I understand so, so, I was anointed. So you speak other languages by the power of the Spirit? Do you yeah. understand? Do you have the gift of interpretation? No. The, 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 well, I'm not saying. Uh, that, you got to be really careful with these spiritual gifts. <laughs> right? Listen. You got to be real here's careful. Here's the thing, right? Like, I would pray with other people. You know what I thought before I had the gift of tongues? I thought it was extremely annoying. I said, I said, man, I, I don't know about that. I just, I'm a, I just I'm a go by the Bible. Christ. I know. The Bible I go by the Bible. I know, but here's, here's the thing, right? We're, we're so are you saying that I don't have the Holy Spirit because I don't speak no, in the gift of tongues? That's not okay. at all what I'm saying. I'm not going to boast in the things that I'm God saying, has used right, me to do. The more I come to the knowledge you. of God, the more I experience the infinite way He reveals Himself to His people, right, and all these other gifts, I come to understand more and more how narrow-minded that I become. And I'm not talking about using discernment or judgment or being cautious or anything like that. Yeah, you should be. But the fact of the matter is, right, I also under, understand of how much I put pe God in a box before I came to encounter it, and how well, it caused I'm me I'm not to be putting judgmental. God in a box. I'm doing what the scripture tells me to do, okay. and to test the spirits, okay? That's biblical. Mm -hmm. That's discernment, right. okay? Well, Discerning of spirits. So, so when somebody speaks in tongues, and I've seen it all the time, tells me in the same moment that they're still a sinner, I discredit it right there, because it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in sinners, period. So if you're telling me, no, he doesn't. He's a Holy Spirit. He's a Holy Spirit. He cleanses the temple, then he lives inside of it. God doesn't dwell in sin at the all. The temple is our hearts. No, the temple is our body. It's very clear in the scripture. The temple of the I Holy mean, it's, Spirit. It's, it's our body. He doesn't dwell in unholy vessels. Well, here's the thing, right? I'm just what telling you what, what we see. What we see from the past, right? Like, for instance, first century A.D., right? There yeah. were no denominations, right? Well, no. actually, they were coming because Paul says, "Some of you say I'm of Paul. Some of right. you say I'm exactly. of Paul." Exactly. They were. They were. They were, they were starting. They were starting. They were manifesting, right? right? And Paul tried to put an end to that right away. Right? Sure. A lot of people with their narrow-minded understanding of all these gifts or experiences with God and all those other things, right? Because they haven't had those things, right? It, it narrows them down, right? So. For instance, like with um, denominations, right? The reason why the church isn't unified, the reason why the United States is being overthrown by, you know, a, a, a spirit of antichrist, right? Because they're in sin. Right. Well, it also is the church should look at itself because the church has been instead of. I don't know on, what church you're talking about, but all the Christians I know, they're not walking in sin. So I don't, I don't, when you say, when you, when you're saying the church, the church doesn't want to work together. There are a lot of people, right? When you're saying the church, judge other Christians. I've never had that experience before. So I'm going to judge you. When you're saying the church, are you talking about 501c3 organizations that call themselves churches? Well, or are you calling, are you talking about the actual body of Christ? I'm, I'm saying, Ray, when, when you start getting down to, like, we're, 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 we're talking about some of the, you know, some, we're really bringing scripture down to the minutia, right? We're really bringing it to a fine cutting of hairs here. Right? No, we're not. About we're talking things. about false gifts of the Spirit and true gifts of the Spirit. There's a lot of deception in America right now. I've been through a lot of it. Believe me, I, God delivered me out of a lot of deception when it comes to the move of the Spirit. Okay, so I, I, I know what I'm talking about here when it comes to fake tongues. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. And, and, and from studying scripture and praying to God and asking him, what is this? I come to the revelation of what true gifts are. And it's, and, and, and it's the same people that Hamana Shema Hatata Shataya, they're the same ones that'll curse you out. I've seen it. I'm, I'm or not, or I'm say that I'm a that, sinner. I'm not saying that, or, people, or can't whatever. In, that, that can't, people can't manifest fake tongues, right? Oh. Or even demonic tongues. Definitely. I'm not saying that. Something. Yeah, I mean, but that 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 I, I can tell you right now is definitely deception. I'm not saying that it can't be. Yeah. What I'm saying is that to label all of it, you know what I mean, and just say, no, it's all. If if people are saying humming and shumming and you and you don't understand what it is, just saying, yeah, that's fake. <laughs> I mean, I'll go with the scripture over anybody's opinion any day. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you you, you might not like that answer, but I'm just gonna go with the Bible and what what that says. That's my safest place.
the Word of God. If it, if it doesn't, if it's not in the heart of Scripture, it might not be to the letter, but if it's not according to the heart of Scripture, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to respect it or accept it at all. That's just me. If I'm wrong, then the Lord will help me. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. You said something about an experience or whatever. We're talking about tongues. I was going to say something about my experience. Honestly, I can't remember exactly what I was going to say, but it had to do with, um, uh, like, do you believe that Christians can come under the power of a demon? Christians that are filled with the Spirit? No, they cannot. Because the Bible's, the Bible's very clear that a demon can't have fellowship with Christ. Well, you, all, you just so. reminded me of something else. That like, hey, I like your hat. Scripture says, oh. I like your hat. Cool, man. <laughs> Praise God. The scripture says to be filled with the Spirit. That's right. <laughs> like, it's something that we participate in as well. Sure. Um, but we can also quench the Spirit. It's, sure can. The scripture says that. So, like, does that mean the, the Spirit is leaving when we're. And how do we quench the Spirit by sinning? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean the Spirit's leaving because if you're still being... So, like like John said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So, the times where I have turned to sin, the Holy Spirit was on me. Like, you need to repent right now. Why does He do that? Why does God do that? What what repentance Repentance is a mind change which leads to a change of action to heartily amend your wicked ways. That's when you when you when you break it down in the Greek. That's what it, that's what it means. It's a mind change that leads to an action of changing and heartily amending your wicked ways, and and uh, that's why God is so strong on us when we when, if we ever do fall into a sin and turn away, we fall into a temptation. If we do, you guys got to go. I'm sorry, I kept y'all too long. It's been a great conversation. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah yeah. What's your name? Jeff, Jeff, I'm Adam. Adam. Good talking to you. How long are you all in town? Uh, we're in town till Sunday. We're going back to Georgia Sunday morning. Yeah, we're from south, uh, just south of Atlanta. Do you, would you like prayer for anything? Uh, you can pray for me in your in your uh, private time for our just our time here. I'm going to Israel next next month again to share the gospel in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem like we do here. So you you can pray for that. that that there'll be Muslims and Jews that are softened right. to the gospel, you know. And yeah. so, so we're going to be doing some I street preaching there. I feel like I feel like I could be wrong, but my sense is that you do have a gift of discernment. But people with a gift of discernment can become very deceived in ways, and we have to keep going. That's back. why we got to go back so to the Bible. Keep asking God, like, to show us sure. His heart and show absolutely. Us what he wants us to understand. He's given me a gift of discernment. Good. Um, but, but it's been, his gift. There have been times when I've been, like, it's a battle. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Take care. Y'all have a good night. Blessing. Because this is not a game. This is not a chance to see the spotlight It's not about a church that seats a thousand Or a choir that sings on key It's about the kingdom And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity Oh, and this is not a game and this is not a chance to see the spotlight It's not about a church that seats a thousand Or a choir that sings on the key It's about the kingdom And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity And make time for me When will you make time for me?